Welcome to this introduction to the Magic Markers Editor Extension for Unity. In this tutorial, we will look at how to install Magic Markers and run the main demo scene to see the markers in action. Other videos will show you how to customize the markers for your own project. Here we have Unity 2017.2 open in a new, empty project. To install Magic Markers, just import the Unity package file, either from the Asset Store or from a folder in your local system. At the time of this recording, the package isn't yet released, so I will import Magic Markers from the local system. Of course, you can import Magic Markers into an existing project. We're just keeping things uncluttered for this demo. Magic Markers doesn't include any of Unity's standard assets, so it shouldn't conflict with any files already in your project. As you import Magic Markers, you can choose to exclude the demo subfolder if you no longer need it, or you can import it now and delete it later. In fact, the only subfolders strictly required are scripts, scripts slash editor, and resources. The marker types folder is useful as a sample of each shape, but you can also use the editor menus to recreate any or all of them. After import, you can move the magic markers folder somewhere else in your project if you prefer, but read the user manual for some tips about how to do that safely. For this demo, we'll leave things where they are. The core of Magic Markers is a set of C-sharp scripts in the Scripts folder and the Editor subfolder underneath that, plus the custom shader here in the Resources folder. Be sure to leave the shader in a folder named Resources so it will be properly included with your Unity builds. Let's open the main demo scene and have a look around. Magic Markers comes with two demo scenes, the main one that we'll use in this video and a simplified one that you can examine and run as you wish. The two demos are in Plugins, Magic Markers, Demo, Scenes. I'll just double click the main demo to open it in the scene view. Since it's a simple environment, all the lighting is real time, and the nav mesh is pre baked for you, so you should be able to just open and run the demo easily. Here in the demo, you can see that we have a very simple terrain with a bridge, plus a lot of magic markers in different shapes and colors. There is at least one of every predefined marker type in this scene, plus several custom ones. On this raised area, we have a circular magic marker indicating where this green capsule will patrol in the game. For variety, there are also a few particle systems scattered about, with magic markers acting as visible placeholders to show their locations. Players will spawn over here from this green booth marker, which is actually inside a separate magic marker made from a custom guard booth mesh created in Blender. Here in the river are two more magic markers made from custom meshes, in this case simple primitives built into Unity. Generic magic markers support a primary and secondary mesh of your choice, and they'll render in contrasting colors. Since this is an editing and debugging tool, the generic meshes should have low polygon counts and simple geometry. There is also a built-in tool to help you create your own procedural meshes in c -sharp code, but we'll cover these advanced topics in a different tutorial. Notice how the Unity Editor sometimes shows the particle systems and sometimes hides them for performance reasons. This is one of the great advantages of Magic Markers over Unity's gizmos. These little particle markers are visible all the time in your scene view, even when they're not selected, and they are useful as placeholders during development, before the actual effects assets have been created by artists. As you can see from the hierarchy, it's common to have multiple game objects that have very similar names. It can be pretty tedious to locate the one you want from the hierarchy when the unselected objects are not visible in the scene itself. With Magic Markers, to select any of these duplicated waypoints or particle emitters, just navigate to it and click on it in the scene, which is much more intuitive. Unlike Unity's billboard icons, Magic Markers are fully three-dimensional objects that help you visualize their location in scene space. In this demo, the large Unity UI canvas sits on top of part of the scene because that's the way Unity does things. In a real project, we would probably split that into an additively loaded, separate scene, but for this demo it was best to keep things simple. Just be careful it's not in front of the object you actually want to select in the scene. If we go to the game view, you can see that most of the markers are invisible. That's the way they are normally intended to work. Magic Markers gives you visible, selectable markers for game objects that would normally be invisible in the editor's scene view. However, a few of the objects are visible in the game view. 
That's something you can configure in your own project, either from the inspector or from a C-sharp script. The demo has a simple orbital camera rig, so use the four arrow keys or drag the left mouse button to orbit or tilt the camera. Use the I and O keys or the mouse scroll wheel or drag the right mouse button to zoom the camera in and out. The main camera covers most of the game screen, but in the lower left corner is a very simple mini-map rendered in real time with an orthogonal camera shooting downward from above. Here at the bottom are some clickable buttons. The reset and quit buttons do exactly what you would expect, although the quit button is ignored inside the Unity editor. Reset will clear the demo back to its starting status, except for your camera position. This light button toggles the scene lighting between daylight and night by changing the directional lighting and by disabling and enabling the skybox. Magic markers are rendered with a custom unlit shader. Since they're meant primarily as a development and debugging tool, we are much more concerned with visibility than with photorealism. There isn't much going on in the scene right now, so let's use the Add Player button to send in a few simulated players. It's very common in early prototypes to use a capsule object as a stand-in for characters, so that's exactly what we are doing here. Each time we press Add Player, another capsule will spawn into the scene. They seek out the navigation waypoints, those diamond-shaped markers, and move from one to the other. You may notice that most of the waypoints are red, but they turn white whenever one or more of the capsule players have randomly selected that marker as its destination. If you are just using magic markers in the editor for guard patrol waypoints or other hidden NPC logic, you won't want to have them render in the game at all. In this demo, however, think of the markers as being quest destinations or other points of interest for the human player, so we do render them in the game. This also illustrates how your C-sharp code can dynamically change the color of markers at runtime. The demo also has a gong-shaped marker attached to a trigger box collider here at one end of the bridge. Whenever one of the player objects touches the trigger, the gong will sound off and the gong marker will be visible for a fraction of a second. If you have an important sound effect and want to make your game more accessible to deaf players, this is one way to accomplish that. The unlit shader and partial transparency of the marker help to cue the player that it's a user interface element for the player and not something that is supposed to exist within the game's own universe. I'll mute the gong sound for the rest of this video. Most of the time, nearly all of your magic markers will be invisible in the game, but for debugging purposes or to use them as map markers or quest destinations, you can use the inspector or your own c -sharp code to enable individual magic markers to render in the game as well as in the editor. To easily accomplish this from an in-game debugging console or from an unpublished keyboard shortcut, we include a static boolean setting that temporarily turns on all of the magic markers in your entire project to render in the game. By design, this setting is not serialized, so you don't have to worry about accidentally releasing a build with all the markers showing in the game. Here in the demo, this debug button simulates activating a debug view from your developer console or a keyboard shortcut. All of the magic markers are now visible, including that gong marker, because the debug flag temporarily overrides all other settings. When you individually enable quest or map markers into the game, you can control which camera or cameras render them. In debug mode, though, it also overrides that setting, so now we are seeing all of the markers rendering on both the main and the minimap camera. For the moment, we'll turn off debug by clicking its button again. Let's return to the scene view for a moment. We'll select one of the player objects in the hierarchy, then, with the mouse over the scene window, press the F key twice to follow that player as it moves around the scene. The player itself is a featureless capsule, but we've attached a flat and brightly colored magic marker to the base of the player prefab. This marker actually has two purposes. For the developer, it means that we can pause the game and still see which way our prototype capsule is facing. It's not hard to see which way a capsule is moving, but when it's stopped, you would normally have to have it selected to see the plus Z direction of its gizmos. In our demo scene, that flat base marker is always rendered by the minimap camera, but not by our scene's main camera and it shows up as a bright indicator on the minimap. The visible player is the opposite. It is set up with camera culling layers to render on the main camera, but not on the minimap. 
During prototyping with capsules, this isn't so important, but once the animated characters are added, rendering all those skinned meshes in both the main and minimap cameras would be very costly in performance. The magic marker used in prototyping also provides a very efficient way to represent players or enemies in a minimap during normal gameplay. You could make different colors or shapes to represent the current player, their allies, and enemies, although this demo includes only one character type. Magic markers are mainly an editor and debugging tool, and so they are all procedural meshes generated by c -sharp code to avoid inflating your project's build size. The downside of this is that each marker rendered in the game cameras is a draw call, although a very simple one. Even so, magic markers are optimized for no GC allocations after initialization except for one frame if a marker's appearance is dynamically altered, and their rendering is reasonably efficient because of the very simple unlit shader. Let's add a lot of players to this scene and see how it looks in the profiler. We'll turn off the vSync part of the graph because that is time that Unity is waiting and not rendering. Here we're at 100 players to see the baseline performance of the scene itself with very few magic markers. Now let's enter debug mode to turn on all the markers, including one on every player. Of course, the frame rate drops a bit. This is way more magic markers than you would normally show within the game, and they're rendering on both cameras because of debug mode. Just rendering them as minimap indicators during a normal game would have less impact on render time. The magic markers asset has been tested with over 200 players in this scene, although you really shouldn't do that in a real project. That concludes this introduction to magic markers. In other tutorials, we'll look at the settings for marker types and for individual markers in more detail, and we'll cover some realistic use cases for your real projects. Thank you for watching and listening. Be sure to look for magic markers in the Unity Asset Store.